Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSC Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you're enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 3 of topic 11, Organic Chemistry. Let's go a bit further in naming organic compounds. In organic chemistry, numbers are used in the names of compounds to show where specific groups like functional groups are attached to the carbon chain. These numbers help ensure clarity especially when different arrangements of atoms, that is isomers, are possible. Now for alkanes, we don't have to do this because remember, alkanes do not have a functional group. Therefore, there's no numbering in alkane names. Here are the structural and displayed formulas for alkanes containing up to four carbon atoms per molecule. Here's how the numbering works in general for unbranched organic compounds. Start numbering from the end closest to the functional group. Assign the number to the carbon where the functional group is attached. This number indicates the exact position of the functional group. For example, in this compound, which end carbon atom is closest to the functional group? Is it this end or this end? This end carbon is closest to the functional group OH, right? So, we start the numbering from this carbon as 1 and then we continue the numbering to 2 and 3. Now, since this compound has three carbon atoms, we know it starts with prop. Because it has an OH group, we know the name will end with all. The carbon that is attached to the OH group is carbon number 1. So, the name of this compound is propan 1 all. This is its structural formula which shows exactly where the OH group is attached. If the functional group is on this side, we will count the carbon at this end as carbon number 1 since it is the closest to the hydroxyl group. The numbering continues to 2 and 3. So this is also propan 1 all. This system applies to various families like alcohols and alkenes, ensuring everyone can easily identify where functional groups are located. It helps prevent confusion between isomers, which are compounds with the same molecular formula but different structures. Here are the structural and displayed formulas for alkenes containing up to 4 carbon atoms per molecule. Propene doesn't have any numbering because the double bond in propene is always between the first and second carbon atoms, regardless of the direction of numbering, whether from left to right or right to left. In but1-ene, the double bond, that is the functional group, is located between the first and second carbon atoms. We start numbering from the end closest to the double bond, so this end carbon is carbon number 1. The numbering continues to 2, 3 and 4. Since this hydrocarbon has 4 carbon atoms, we know it starts with but. Because it has a double bond, the name ends with ene. Therefore, the name of this compound is but 1-ene. In but2-ene, the double bond is between the second and third carbon atoms. We again number from the end closest to the double bond, making this carbon number 2. The numbering continues to 3 and 4. 
we can number from either end as both are equally close to the double bond, making this carbon number 2. This compound also has 4 carbon atoms, so it starts with butte. The presence of the double bond means the name ends with ene. Therefore, the name of this compound is but2ene. Here are the structural and displayed formulas for alcohols containing up to 4 carbon atoms per molecule. So for methanol and ethanol, it's pretty straightforward. Numbering is not needed because methanol has just one carbon, so the hydroxyl group is always attached to it. And ethanol has two carbons, and the hydroxyl group is always attached to the first carbon, making numbering unnecessary. In propan-1-ol, the OH group is located on the first carbon atom. We start numbering from the end closest to the OH group. So this end carbon is carbon number 1. The numbering continues to 2 and 3. Since this compound has 3 carbon atoms, we know it starts with prop. Because it has a OH group, the name ends with ol. Therefore, the name of this compound is propan 1-ol. Likewise, in propan 2-ol, the hydroxyl group or the OH group is located on the second carbon atom. We start numbering from the end closest to the hydroxyl group, so this end carbon is carbon number 1. Since this carbon has 3 carbon atoms, we know it starts with prop. Because it has a hydroxyl group, the name ends with ol. Therefore, the name of this compound is propan-2-ol. In butan-1-ol, the OH group is on the first carbon atom. We number from the end closest to the hydroxyl group, making it carbon number 1, followed by 2, 3 and 4. With 4 carbon atoms, the name starts with but and ends with ol, resulting in the name butan-1-ol. In butan 2 ol the hydroxyl group or the OH group is on the second carbon atom. We number from the end closest to the hydroxyl group, making this carbon number 1. This compound has 4 carbon atoms starting with but and ending with ol. Therefore, the compound is named butan 2 ol Carboxylic acids do not require numbering because the carboxyl group is always at the end of the carbon chain, making its position clear by default. Here are the structural and displayed formulas for carboxylic acids containing up to 4 carbon atoms per molecule. Finally, let's learn a bit about esters. An ester is an organic compound formed from the reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. This reaction produces members of another homologous series known as esters. They often have fruity smells and are commonly used in flavoring and fragrances. COO is the functional group in esters, also known as an ester group or link. This is how we name an ester. Change the alcohol name to end with YL. Example, propanol to propyl. Change the carboxylic acid name to end with O8. Example, ethanoic acid to ethanoate. The name of the alcohol comes first, followed by the name of the carboxylic acid. The alcohol part comes first in the name, but second in the formula. Let's look at an example. When ethanoic acid, a carboxylic acid, reacts with propanol, which is an alcohol, an ester called propyl ethanoate is produced, along with water. As you can see, in this reaction, 
the OH from the carboxylic acid and the H from the alcohol combine to form water. The remaining parts join together to form the ester which contains the COO ester group. Let's look at a few examples to learn how to name and draw the displayed formulas of unbranched esters. When methanol, an alcohol, reacts with butanoic acid, an ester called methyl butanoate is formed. Notice that the name has the alcohol part first and the carboxylic acid part second. In the structural formula, however, the carboxylic acid part comes first, followed by the alcohol part. This same process applies to other esters as well. Take a look at more examples. Ethanol and propanoic acid gives ethyl propanoate. Butanol and methanoic acid gives butyl methanoate. That concludes part 3 of topic 11, Organic Chemistry. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye-bye.